Asking questions is a key strategy for guiding students through the engineering process. What questions you ask and how you ask them can have a significant impact on what students take away from their classroom experience. In every EIE unit, children are asked to design a technology that solves a particular problem. It might be a water filter, a parachute, or a hand pollinator. As part of the design process, students test and evaluate the success of their designs. This can be a tricky teaching moment since hardly any design works perfectly the first time. In this Spotlight video, we will give you some tips on how to ask questions that help students do their own troubleshooting. The types of questions you ask should help students think critically about their designs and motivate them to improve. Let's take a look at one teacher whose students are designing a model train. The students use what they know about magnets to design a train that floats above a track. In this case, the student's first design did not work as they expected. Which looks like it's attracting me. So do you think it might be a good idea to check the poles first? Yeah, this side here is like a different pole than yeah. this. So it's oh. trying to slide over. Okay. On this one is telling, but it's connecting on this one. During this lesson, Kathleen doesn't need to say much to keep her students interested and engaged. Maybe it's what she doesn't say that allows students the freedom to come up with ideas themselves. However, the process doesn't always go this smoothly. As teachers, we need to be able to figure out why students' designs are not working so that we can ask questions that guide them towards reasonable next steps. We saw this strategy at work when Kathleen asked the students to check the poles of their strip magnets. While some lines of questioning might discourage students or make them feel anxious, productive questioning will challenge students just enough to make them want to try again. For example, in this next clip, students are designing a parachute that needs to fall very slowly. They have a variety of materials to choose from, such as coffee filters, plastic, and sheer fabric that they can use to design their canopy. Prior to this lesson, students tested each of these materials to see how they affected the rate at which a parachute falls. Jean's questions help students recall this lesson and apply that knowledge to the decisions they are making now. Okay, so what might you think about then as a team? A little smaller. What about um, Kendra? What did you think? Uh, what I was thinking was, I was thinking I wanted coffee filters. This is just way too delicate. Let's look at the, the information on the guiding question for lesson three. What material fell best? Um, do you remember that? They tested that? Plastic. Yeah. Why do you think that's delicate? Let me ask that question. It's very, like, very thin and fine. Right. Did you see them, did you see them being tested last week? Did they fall apart? <laughs> Through her questions, Jean is challenging the students' conception that the fine and delicate materials won't work. Knowing the basic science behind the technologies your students are designing can help you focus your questions. Remember, EIE units are designed to be taught in conjunction with their relevant science topic. For example, the Designing Parachutes unit can be taught along with a science unit on the solar system. For a quick review, every EIE teacher guide includes information on the relevant science topic as well as on the technology students will be designing. EIE teacher guides also include prompts and sample questions to help you. But when students begin designing their own technologies, every conversation is unique. When your students are working in groups to test their designs, you want to ask questions to help them identify the strengths and weaknesses of their technologies and encourage them to think about how they might improve. In this next clip, second graders have designed sails that should catch the wind from a fan and move a boat down a track. Let's think about this. What is happening to the sail? Is it catching the wind? No. So what do you think? What do you think you should do to make it catch the wind? To make it a little more round to have the wind go in it and push it. Good. Okay, so try that. Open-ended questions establish that you value your students' ideas. As each design is personal and unique, a good strategy is to begin by asking person-centered questions. For example, you might start with something like, can you tell me about your design? All students from first grade to fifth love to tell you about what they have made. 
Look what we've created so far. What is this called? It's tin foil. Oh, that's copper wire. It is copper wire. But where is your um, plastic model? Is it this one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. This doesn't fit in here. Choosing the best material for a design is an important part of engineering. Inexperienced students often have trouble predicting how different materials will behave, and they're often surprised by their results. Ask the students to describe the materials they are using and push them to justify their choices. We have three cotton balls, and we have um, a folded screen and a folded um, cloth so we get extra clean. Making. And stamp. Okay, and what materials are you using? A tissue paper and a plastic bag. Oh, so what's the plastic bag going to be? Gonna, what are you going to do with the plastic bag? I'm going to put it over the tissue paper. When your students finally get to the step where they test and evaluate their designs, ask questions that focus their attention on exactly what they are seeing. Close observation can help students identify ways to improve their designs. Um, Julia, can you you guys share what happened? Somebody, one of you, tell us what happened. What we think got, went wrong was that the sponge was blocking too much of the water from going down into the coffee filters, and then the coffee filters couldn't drip the water down fast enough. So something's wrong with the sponge. Okay, so Julia's team thinks that there's something wrong with the sponge. So let's share some ideas about the sponge from other groups. Um, and let's see if maybe their ideas can kind of help you out in making your improvements. Okay, uh, Vivian, your group. Did you have too much water go through? Yeah, can you see this group? They had too much, look at, they have a lot of water. Too much water go through. So this group has too much, you have too little, and you both use sponge, right? So do you think it's the sponge? It might not be the sponge, so it might be something to consider something else in the design. Your students may want to scrap a design that doesn't immediately work, but thoughtful questions can guide your students to keep trying. The engineering design process is naturally iterative, and improvement is a built-in part of the cycle. Make it clear to your students that you value this process by asking them for ideas on how they could make their designs even better. It's not going to work. Okay, let's try it. It's struggling. It's struggling. Oh, it's doing it. There it goes. It's doing it. It's doing it. How do you think you might improve it so it'll lift more weights? What could you do to make yours better? We can put more cups. When you ask students the right types of questions, you help them build confidence in their ability to engineer. And failure is cast as a natural part of the engineering design process from which all engineers learn. Your students didn't fail. It's just an element of the design that failed. In fact, students build more confidence from improving a design than from building one that works on the first try.